the primary thing they did in ADO was to bring out a new uh, UI for the service request management module where in this single pane of glass, of course, I as an end user can see most importantly all of my open issues that I have and what the current status is there. I also, of course, can see different service requests that are available to me to, from my actionable service catalog, as well as I can get to the remedy knowledge management system and leverage those, all without having to flip off of this page and go somewhere else. They also brought out the ability for uh, announcements and things of importance to be uh, scrolled to these end users, to typical web form where you may have different uh, iterations of some information coming up, all of this from a, a single pane of glass. And I'll show you a little bit of this when we actually go into the live uh, demo. In, uh, in doing that, they've also made a number of enhancements to the actual service request catalog questioning. As you can see now, you can have uh, you can have instructions. You can have multi-response boxes as you go through there. Uh, we'll obviously pre-fill a lot of the information since we know who the user is or own requests on behalf of. We can fill that, uh, that type of information in. The other thing they, of course, has done is uh, they, you know, with bring your own device is the new mantra, right? So through your smart device, you can submit your request uh, through your Android or iPhone or iPad, whatever you may have there. Uh, just download that from the App Store, and you are ready to go. And of course, you know, optionally, BMC has always had available the ability for staff to also come in and actually work uh, the tickets from the mobile devices. So again, kind of free here for the end users. Just download it and run it, uh, as, and staff is an optional way of doing that. They also, in ADO, redesigned the, the uh, login onto Approval Central, it's known as, just kind of flattened it out, made it more intuitive, easier to use. And then we also added the ability for approvals to be done in ADO via your, again, your smartphone device. Again, a lot of times the people doing approvals are not necessarily your staff members. So anybody with, uh, with access to your system via their smartphone could do the uh, do the approvals that way as well. One of the other things that's kind of new in, in ADO that we, we introduced was the ability to have chat going on. And, and there are really three levels of chat that we can do here. We can first off leverage this virtual agent, which uses artificial intelligence to try to uh, uh, discern the answer to whatever question that is typed in into the question box. Uh, if, if that doesn't suffice, or if you'd rather talk to a live agent with a single click, you would be connected to a staff member who was part of the, uh, the external support, and you could uh, have a chat dialogue just like you've probably done on many websites uh, and get your questions answered that way, and they would have the ability, of course, to push files to you, view your registry, do those types of things. And of course, we also introduced in this version the ability for agents to chat amongst themselves. And the other thing from a social media standpoint that they did in ADO is starting to allow uh, information to be disseminated via Twitter feeds and RSS feeds. So broadcasts could go out, for example, as a, uh, as a tweet from within there. So you'll probably see more and more of that in all the products as we go forward, uh, uh, given the proliferation of that. A lot of UI improvements and functionality in a one of the things that you'll see when I actually go into like an incident form is if you have some of the complementary products like Blade Logic, like the Proactive Net monitoring tools and all that are from BMC, if those have a, have an alert or something going on, they can easily feed that information and display it right on the incident screen itself. And I'll show you that when we get into it. And then, of course, there's a new feature called Service Context, which will allow me, if I'm working on a problem or an incident that's linked to a particular service, I can see everything relating to that service, the CIs, any incidents that are open, any changes that are open. So, again, we're just enabling that staff member to have more rich information available to them at their fingertips to hopefully provide a quicker problem resolution there. This particular screen is showing you an example. This is obviously an incident form. Uh, and if we had Proactive Net, BPPM installed, if there were a service located, in this case email, you'd get your green, yellow, red checkbox as far as what's the health of this particular service in our organization. 
or if I wanted to, from that form, either explore the service CI or launch this service context, again, showing you what CIs are involved, what are the changes, incident problems that may be going on, any email uh, conversations that may be going on, you could get that right from the uh, incident form itself as you go through there. Uh, really just kind of showing you a little bit closer view of what that uh, what that context kind of looks like that. So services and CIs, incidents in the last two hours, changes in the last 24 hours, do they have any SL uh, level agreements and service targets uh, associated uh, with it. One of the great new things they've added for the staff also is on the actual form itself. You'll notice when you're looking at the incident form now, whoops, on the incident form now, we've actually added in a tab at the top to show categorizations. It used to be you had to reach over into the uh, left hand uh, fly out and pick that, and it was a pop up that came. Now we're showing those right on the screen along with any associated task, obviously, relationships and work detail has always been there. So that's. Uh, uh, that's available, and, and you know, a new global search that lets you kind of get things very, very quickly, including we had a lot of customers who wanted to search by the user I love, uh, themselves, so that's now been added in, uh, in ADO. Uh, ADO also brought about, finally, an out-of-the-box ability to have inbound emails create their tickets. Now, most of you out there probably had this, but it took a fair amount of work from a professional services standpoint to get that working, and so now they've kind of made that an out-of-the-box configurable thing, which uh, cuts down on the uh, level of effort it is to get that uh, working for creating both incidents or updating via work, work info updates to be able to update those tickets. So that's, that's really getting better as we go forward, and you'll see a little bit later on there's some other things they're doing with email in uh, in version 8.1. Uh, Web-based reporting, of course, came about initially in 7.604, but the nice enhancement they made in 8.0 is the ability now to finally be able to schedule those reports. Uh, so as you can see here on the screenshot, I can schedule when I want one of my designated reports to run and you know whether I wanted to have any export options and that type of thing. So that makes the, uh, you know, the, it used to be in the past if you wanted to do something like that, you needed Crystal Enterprise and a lot of other costly things. Crystal is still supported, of course, but I think when you see this, you'll see just how intuitive the new web-based reporting is. And again, with this ability now to schedule, it, uh, it makes for a nice feature there. The other thing that was kind of introduced in 7604, but it was still an external kind of module you could put in, uh, but in 80, it's kind of kind of there is the process designer, which is going to give us an ability to be able to go in and speed up the process by uh, 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 how quickly we can design uh, workflows within Remedy, how fast we can uh, create new service request definitions for our SRM module, and you know. BMC will tell you in their slides, you could save up to 90%, but let's say you know, you're know you a very complex organization, maybe you only save 50%, still a vast improvement. And this is something that's uh, detailed enough to where we will probably hold one of those more concentrated seminars that I spoke of at the beginning of this uh, on just this topic because it's too uh, diverse in showing you how it works to try to do it in uh, the context of this seminar, but we, uh, we do want to show you more of that. So again, the, the difference here is it's now for the entire ISM, ITSM suite. It's not limited to you know just the incident form and the work order form. It, it really can work with anything within uh, within the uh, within the environment there. So uh, stay tuned for more detail on that one going uh, going forward. Uh, also in ADO, they released what they call you know this new universal data management for data loading to speed that up. And basically, what they've done is we're supplying, or BMC is now supplying templates for the, all the various things that you have to kind of bulk import into your system. So people categorizations for both product and uh, and um, operational categories, uh, whatever you need to do in these templated forms are out there. So it makes it very uh, uh, very much quicker turnaround for you if you just fill out the template and then use the data loading tool that uh, we can get things in there and work in a little bit quicker. And again, just another uh, another view of what that might look like with a little closer closer view there. 
Uh, one other thing they introduced in aid, and this would certainly not pertain to, to the majority of the audience out there probably, but they did uh, uh, introduce a hub-and-spoke technology where it's kind of more or less for managed service providers more than anything else, but where if you've got a central hub that needs to manage individual instances of remedy that may be out there in the environment, it does that. And if, if there's anybody there who wants more information on that, just let us know and we'll, we'll get you some detail. But again, it's, it's kind of specialized in what you're doing there. Uh, the other thing that they did with ADO is they went to, you know, a, an online wiki-based set of documentation as opposed to having these separate manuals for everything that you, uh, you might want to do, you know, one for administrator, one for user of each one of the modules. It's kind of all out there. You can certainly segregate it by doing it, but you can basically, with this one link here, get to any of the modules under the ITSM suite with the uh, default information there and anything that you want to do there. If you do want a PDF a section of it, for if you did want to have a hard copy or even electronic uh, uh, copy of it that was more filtered into whatever you put into the PDF, that's certainly there. But that, uh, that was a welcome addition that uh, they brought out in ADO. So they did a lot of great things. Uh, SRM and some of the UI layouts for staff were probably what I would consider the majority of the things they did in 8, but they've really done some great things in 8.1.2. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the, the primary features uh, that you're going to see here. And again, you're going to see things about the usability, the approvals, the calendar, and then some things to get you up and running a little bit quicker. So those of you who may have, have change management implemented in 7604 and before, this was basically your calendar view that, that's been in change management for Remedy 7X since, uh, since it really came out. And, you know, the, the good thing you could say about it was it at least was, had the ability to show both business events and uh, the actual change requests themselves. But, you know, it's kind of not very modern looking, and it's kind of limited in, in what your view looks like. So they really put a lot of work into changing this, and I'll be happy to show you that when we go into the demo. But they've now got more of an outlook, and it's not outlook, but more of an outlook look and feel as far as what's going on with your, with your calendars here. And I'm going to uh, step through this rather quickly because I'm actually showing it to you live. But you can see here I'm obviously looking at a pretty detailed view here. I can have my own filters of how I might want to slice and dice things. I've got uh, collapsible panels on both the left and the right-hand side to bring out additional information where required. Uh, I can have, again, my own select queries of how I might want to view it. My view can be monthly, weekly, or daily as far as looking at my changes. As you can see here, they're, they're color-coded as well, uh, multiple views of that calendar. And I can say, okay, well, what are the events that are associated with a given change request or whatever? So here are all my events, my change requests for the upcoming week. I print this out. I take it to the cab for everybody to review these in a very simplified uh, way to do that as opposed to having to bring up the individual change request forms them, uh, themselves. Obviously, we can uh, change the views that we're looking at there. We can look at it from a timeline view if you want to look at it or from a list view. Uh, we talked a little bit about you've now got uh, configurable color schemes that uh, that you can have there. So use it just like in my Outlook. I certainly use color coding to designate my activities during the day, and they're following a similar concept here. And the other great thing about the calendar that's very much different is I can actually update a ticket by just doing a drag and drop or opening a ticket in context and doing it. So if I wanted to move an event from uh, today oh, down to next week, I can just drag and drop that change request entry, and it will automatically change the, uh, the dates and times and make the adjustments uh, there for me automatically. So quite a lot of improvement uh, if you're a change user uh, going to 8.1 to get this uh, to get this functionality. 